back up, Jesus? Hello? Hello? Jesus? It's so dark here. Do you notice all the darkness all around us? I'm always with you. I, I know you are. Um, but that doesn't make it any easier. That Focus. doesn't mean it's not dark. Focus on me. I am focused on you. You seem more focused on the dark. What do you mean it seems like I'm more focused on the dark? Did you see the light? Yes, of course I see the light. When you follow me, you'll never see darkness. I want to follow you. Well then, follow me. I... I am really sorry, guys. <laughs> um, Yes, of course there's light. I want to follow the light. Then stand with me. I'm in the light with you. I'm following you. Then follow me. Okay. Can you stay on the line? Yes. If you'd please pray with me. God, I ask that you'd pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here today. That as you summon us to follow you, even when we are convinced that the darkness is too great, we ask that you would guide us to follow you into the light, to follow you into the truth, to follow you into your love. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Thank you to Elizabeth and Jesus for joining us in worship today and for telling a common story about how we often, you know, the, so far we've had skits where God was calling us. Sometimes the call of Jesus comes when we first contact Jesus and say, I need you, and Jesus says, you need to follow me, so it's a good part of the story. I've been uh, noticing, I don't know about you, but noticing lately that uh, it's harder to walk my dog in the evening because it's dark. And I end up needing a flashlight to even take a walk, and I don't do this late at night. I mean, I usually try to walk... Uh, Fern, while uh, we're getting Maxine ready for bed, and you know, one of us takes, it's not always me, but one of us takes Fern out for a walk at that time, so it's usually you know, 6.30 maybe, and yet it's dark. I'm a very responsible dog owner, and so I always carry a bag with me to pick up Fern's refuse. And I have to admit that I was unfortunately that person the other day because I didn't have a light with me, and it was so dark, I couldn't see where she had gone to the bathroom. And so I just walked on and moved on. I should have had a flashlight. I usually would have my phone with me, and that, I, you know, these days you can use your phone as a flashlight, but I had left my phone at home. We heard words today from Jesus about how when we follow him, we are never in darkness, but we are in the light. And it is clear that Jesus didn't live in Michigan. But if we stop and take these words seriously and ask ourselves what they mean, then as we take this entire scripture that Daniel read so well and put the emphasis in the right place, we see that there's a clear connection between the light and the truth. Jesus goes on to talk about how his testimony, it's being challenged, the, the religious Folks of that day are saying, you know, you can't testify to yourself. That's not how it works. A, a single person's testimony isn't valid. You need more than one person. And yet Jesus speaks to how he is speaking the truth, how his testimony is true, and how it is in the light. And indeed, Jesus' testimony is the light. And it's clear that the light here that Jesus invites us to realize is all around us when we follow him, when Jesus says, if you follow me, you're never in the darkness, and it, 
that you are in the light, it is clear that this light is God's presence. In verse 16, we hear this. Jesus says, my decisions are true because I am not alone. And, you know, this is what's at issue here, right? Is he a single person testifying? You never trust a single person's word. You need more than one testimony. There has to be at least two people to witness to the truth. And Jesus says, I am speaking the truth because I am never alone. And that is because God, the Father, stands with me. I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. There is truth because we are not alone. Jesus says, I am speaking the truth and I'm not testifying to myself because I am not alone. I'm with God. And when we follow in the light, there is no darkness because when we walk with Jesus and follow Jesus, that means that we are with God and God is light. It can be a hard thing for us to fully comprehend because, I don't know about you, but even though I know that, Je- that Jesus and God are light and that nothing can be hidden from them, I still try to hide things from God. Maybe that stain I made on the carpet. You know, it's not that I think God is actually upset about the stain, but I know that someone is going to be, and so I try to hide it, and I don't confess to God that I did this thing wrong. I still try to hide that from God. Do you know what I mean? We try to hide things from the light as if that's possible. But you see, you can only hide things in the dark. When there is light, things can't be hidden. My daughter received a book recently from her grandparents. The book is called uh, the When Darkness Was Done. And in this, uh, we are told that, uh, in, that everyone's afraid of the dark, and the dark doesn't feel appreciated, and so the dark decides that it's going to quit. Um, this is a lot like my mother on Mother's Day. Uh, one year, she was really upset because we hadn't really done anything to recognize her on Mother's Day, so she decided she would quit as a mother. The, the, the darkness feels underappreciated, and so it says, I quit, I'm leaving, and, and all there is is light. And... They said at first people felt like that was a good thing, but after a while they realized that they wanted the darkness to be around, and it's particularly funny because one of the people who really wants the darkness to return is a burglar. And he says, I can't steal things when all there is is light. I need shadows in order to be a burglar. It's a funny story, right? But as a Christian, we understand that in God's presence, there is nothing but light, and there are no shadows. And the burglar is right. We need shadows in order to do the things that we're not supposed to do. We need darkness in order to hide. But with God's presence, we can't do that. In God's presence, there is nothing but light. Light has the ability to cast shadows, but on a day when there is nothing but bright sunshine, You know that even in that shadow, you can see what is in that shadow. That's the nature of light. There is no true darkness in the midst of all of that light. And that's what it's like to be in God's presence. We think we can hide things, but there's nothing that can be hidden in the light of God's presence. There is light everywhere and truth everywhere when we follow Jesus And out of that light, what we experience is the truths of God. And those truths are love and peace and joy and forgiveness. See, the reason that we love the dark so much, the reason we think we can still hide things from God is that we are afraid of most likely punishment, but I you know, mentioned in the children's sermon, you know, embarrassment. We sometimes are simply embarrassed about something that we did. We try to hide it from God as if that's possible. We figure there's some sort of retribution coming, and if we can just keep that truth hidden, then that punishment, that retribution, that embarrassment won't come. But that's not how it works with God. God is light, and God sees everything, and God is there ready to love and forgive. 
In fact, I think it's our tendency to try to keep things hidden that makes God more angry than if we would simply be truthful. I found this out in my own life. I've told the uh, young people in Sunday school about this, and I don't know if I've ever shared this story with you or not, but it has stuck in my mind my entire life. I, there was a time when I did break something. That's what uh, Beth mentioned. I broke something, and it happened in the midst of a time when no one else saw it, and so I figured that I could just lie about it, right? And then there'd be no punishment. The problem was that that conscience that I had kept eating away at me until the point where I confessed to my parents this thing that I had broken. And my parents were more upset at that point than they would have been if I had just told them that I had broken the thing immediately. They were not upset that I had broken the item. They were upset that I had tried to hide that I had broken the item. And I think this is how it works with God. God is, says, I'm light, and if you're with me, there is no darkness. There's only light. And we keep trying to hold on to the darkness, pretending that there's darkness there. Maybe I can just hide this from you, God. God says, stop doing that. I am light and truth and love and forgiveness. When you come and you share your truth with me, there is no punishment. But when you try to hide, then that makes me angry. Because you're trying to deny the fact that I am completely light and that there is no darkness with me. When we walk with Jesus in the light, there is love and forgiveness. And it can be hard to wrap our minds around. We figure that if the truth is known, that that's when the bad thing will happen. But it's the opposite with God. When truth is known and truth is spoken, God is there with love and forgiveness. When we try to hide things, that's when God gets angry. Because God says, that's not my way. All I do is speak the truth. That's what's happening here. They're challenging Jesus, saying, you are lying to us. And Jesus says, that's not possible for me. All I do is speak the truth. And that is God's nature as well. All I do is speak the truth. Truth can be hard sometimes. It does mean that God will say to us, you are going down the wrong path. This is not what I want you to do. That is not the right choice. So we figure maybe we can then hide in the darkness. God says, nope, that's not how it works. I am light. This is where we're most opposed to God. God is all light, and we, we love the darkness. And we hope that we can hide things. But the reality is that the truth is always more valuable, more important, and it's where God can meet us with love and forgiveness. Sometimes as a pastor, I hear things that surprise me, and I've worked really hard at what I call the pastor face. And I have sometimes got the pastor face on all the time, to the extent that I've had people complain because they'll tell me something that they're really excited about, and I sort of look expressionless, right? Hmm. And it's because I've worked really hard so that my emotions don't show on my face because the problem is if you share something really wonderful with me, hopefully I do know it, a smile and say, oh, that's great. But if you share something, you know, that you're afraid to tell the truth about and my reaction is, right, or, or whatever I might respond you immediately feel the judgment of the world when the reality is that as a pastor, I'm meant to show the love of God in all that I do. And so I try to have a neutral face so that whatever I hear, I can try to process and respond the way that God would rather than the way that I would respond. I have to show a face that shows what God thinks as a pastor because while I haven't seen it all and heard it all, God has. There is nothing new under the heavens for God. And when we share the truth, God is ready to love and forgive. But it is so hard for us to wrap our minds around. We are so used to the way that the world reacts. 
that we would rather live in the darkness and try to hide the truth than we would to live in the light and experience God's love and forgiveness. We are so used to people's faces responding in anger or dismay or surprise that we would rather keep the truth hidden at times in order to avoid whatever that reaction is going to be. But God invites us into the light. We learn, again, that this light involves love and forgiveness from God, and we most often see it modeled in others. I mentioned my parents, who, when I would when I did finally confess this thing that I had done, even then, even though they said to me, we're more angry that you hid it, they still were ready to love and forgive me for the thing that I had done. And so I learned in that moment a little bit about how God is. And I hope that as people come to me and share their truth, that they experience the reaction that God would give to them, which is to hear their truth and say, thank you for telling the truth. And, you know, uh, With me, there is no condemnation for sharing the truth. I love it when you come into the light because I know how much you love the darkness. And we do. We love it so much. We love it so much that we have a society built on keeping things hidden, right? So that leaders, if they get caught doing things, rather than admitting the truth, they try to tell us how we don't understand what we've seen and and they didn't actually do it, right? Or they do try to cover up their tracks when they do something wrong and this is how we live because we've seen the world and the world always wants to be angry and to punish us and God says stop hiding in the dark and come into my light I am ready to forgive you we learn it we learn about this love and forgiveness of God from family and from friends from church family from our spouses and partners people that model for us that the hidden things can be brought into the light and yet still be met not with condemnation but with love and forgiveness. When we come into the light, then God can truly transform us and God can give us a new name. We've been singing this song, The Summons, and You know, one of the verses says, will you love the you you hide from me, right? It it names this tendency to not want to admit those stubborn places of sin in our lives or those things that we're embarrassed about or those things we think make us unlovable according to the world standards. God says to us, will you love that person because I already love that person and I want to transform you into someone who is all light rather than someone that is sometimes in the light and still loves to hang on to the darkness. This song is wonderful because it calls us to answer God's call. And this question is asked over and over again, if I just call your name, will you come and follow me? If I just call your name. And the reality is when we answer that summons, when we follow Jesus into the light, then we are given new names. We are truly transformed in the light. We learn to not love the darkness and we learn to let go of the darkness and we become people of the light and it changes our name. We've been asking you to wear a name tag this entire series and to write your name on that so we could greet one another. But the reality is that we all could put on a another name take today as we walk into the light and God would have a name for us to write there. You know, maybe it would be beloved. That's the word that God uses toward Jesus on the day of his baptism. And it's the word that Paul uses frequently to write to the other Christians that he's writing to. Maybe our name take would say child of God. Because this is another name that we're able to claim when we walk in the light. Maybe our name tag would say forgiven because we've been trying to hide something that we assume God just cannot forgive. And God says bring it into the light and you will be met with love and forgiveness. Today I want you to imagine what God might write on your name tag underneath your given name. 
What would be your name if you were completely in the light, as Jesus tells us we are when we follow him, that there is no darkness at all, and yet we still try to cling on to it. We admit that we don't really want to follow Jesus because we want to keep that bit of darkness in our lives so that we can hopefully keep something hidden, which is, again, just ridiculous, and yet it has never stopped me, and I bet it's never stopped you from trying to do it. What would it, our name take say if we truly lived fully in the light? What would it mean if we really lived in the truth? If we realized that we're not alone. This is what Jesus says. I live in the truth and I do it because I'm not alone. The Father is with me and I stand with him. What would God call us if we realized that we can stand with him in the light? I gave a few examples before of the possible names that might come to us, but I want you to think about this this week and answer for yourself. What would God write on your name tag? What would God call when he summoned you, as the song says? And then this week, I want you to go out into the world with that name, whatever it is that God tells you as you ask. You know, what would you call me, Lord? What would you have me write on this name tag? Go out into the world with that name and live in life and light, and love, and forgiveness with others. Because as I said, we learn about these, this nature of God, of living in the light, of telling the truth, of not trying to hide things, and being met with love and forgiveness. We learn it from others. And the only way the world will ever learn it is if we go out into the world and show to them that coming into the light is a good thing. That trying to hide things is not the way to live. This is what we have to give to the world when we answer Jesus' call to follow him. We are called to follow Jesus into the light no matter what the cost with all of our hearts so that as we share the truth of the light and love and forgiveness of God that others might have it and experience it in the way that we have. Amen.